you look around and let somebody know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it but love me back and as I always tell you cashmere a better me makes a better us I love you and there's nothing you can do about it I love you and there's nothing you can do about it I love you I love you I love you I love you This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, you can do better than that right where you are. I said, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, I'm just grateful to be here with you on today on this Father's Day 2021. Grateful to God for all of the fathers who have stood up and have been the head of the household, who have been the priest, the protector, and provider of their homes. I'm just grateful today for the sacrifices that have been made by all of the fathers, and I pray on today that you are receiving the honor that you are due. For the Bible says, honor thy father and thy mother, for this is right in the sight of the Lord. Listen, if you are not excited about today, I am, because I realized that he woke me up this morning and he started me on my way, gave me another opportunity to get right on today what I didn't get right on yesterday. I don't know about you, but I've come with thanksgiving on my heart, a praise on my lips, some clapping in my hands. And if you're not careful, I got a little running in my feet. Why don't you come along with us as we lift up the name of the Lord, for he truly is worthy to be praised. Amen. So thankful for this song of Zion that gets our mind and our heart in the preparatory mode of receiving the word as we continue to um, sing praises and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. I pray on today that your heart and your mind is stayed on Jesus. For he said, I will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. Listen on this morning, if you would, why don't you go with me to the book of Proverbs? Let us go to Proverbs, the fourth chapter. Proverbs, the fourth chapter, and I'll begin reading at the first verse. And the word of the Lord reads, um, Listen, my sons, to the instructions of a father, and pay attention so that you may gain understanding. 
for I give you good teaching. Do not abandon my instruction. When I was a son to my father, tender and the only son in the sight of my mother, he taught me and said to me, let your heart take hold of my words, keep my commandments and live. Acquire wisdom, acquire understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not abandon her, she will guard you, love her, and she will watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is acquire wisdom and with all your possessions, acquire understanding. Prize her, and she will exalt you. She will honor you if you embrace her. She will place on your head a garland of grace. She will present you with a crown of beauty. Listen, my son, and accept my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. I've read for you Proverbs 4, verses 1 through 10. I pray God has a blessing upon the hearing, the reading, and the doing of his holy word. Let us bow. Heavenly Father, we come before your holy presence today just to say thank you. Thank you, God, for another opportunity to gather and call upon your holy and righteous name, recognizing that you are God and besides you there is no other. We thank you, O oh God, recognizing that it is only in you that we live, that we move and have our being. So, Lord, we humbly submit ourselves before your majestic presence, knowing, O oh God, that we can find help even in the time of trouble. Not only that, God, we know that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And so, God, we just come before you thanking you for everything, knowing, God, that without you we can do absolutely nothing. Come also, God, confessing our sins, knowing that we have sinned, we have come short of your glory. Lord, we thank you for Jesus Christ who died that we might have the remission of our sin. And not only that, God, we believe in the word, knowing, O oh God, that you have created us as new creatures in Christ Jesus. So on today, O oh Lord, we pray that what we do is acceptable in your sight. We pray, as David said, for you to create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. We recognize, O oh God, that you sit high, you look low, that you have all power in your hand. On today, God, we lift up those that are disenfranchised, those that are hurting, that are, those that are going through bereavement. We pray on today, God, that you would give them peace that surpasses all understanding. And then, God, we pray for those that are lost, those that uh, have backslidden, those that do not know you in the pardon of sin. We pray, God, that your grace continues, O oh God, until they hear the gospel message. And we pray, O oh God, that your word pricks them at heart and they come running asking the question, what must I do to be saved? And then, God, we pray that they accept you in faith, knowing, O oh God, that you're able to do anything but fail. We pray, O oh God, today for the church, praying for every church that stands open in Jesus Christ's name, asking, O oh God, that you would continue to bless us and endow us with vision, with strength, with power, that, Heavenly Father, we'll be able to stand with conviction, knowing, O oh Heavenly Father, that your word is a lamp unto our feet and that it is a light unto every pathway. We pray special prayers of blessing upon every member of Cashmere Garden Missionary Baptist Church, Praying, O oh God, that you would endow us with wisdom that we might be your disciples, that we might work while it is day, knowing that when night come, no man can work. Give us a zeal, but a zeal according to knowledge that we might live before you in your perfect will. Help us, O oh God, to do all that brings you glory, that we might be found as a church without spot or wrinkle. Now on this morning, God, we pray for your spirit, that, Heavenly Father, it would rest upon the minds and the hearts of the listeners. That, Heavenly Father, their hearts are softened to be able to receive the seed of the word. Not only that, God, that it is planted, that it is watered, but in due season that it bears fruit, much fruit, and that that fruit remains. Lord, on today, we thank you for every Father, Heavenly Father, that you have given us. 
We pray that you continue to endow them with all that they need, that they can be the head of their household, that Heavenly Father, they can live as an example, and in everything, God, that they might humble themselves before your mighty right hand, knowing, O oh, Heavenly Father, that you are the only one able to equip them for the task that you have set their hands to do. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for obedient children who've taken this Sunday to recognize their fathers, to love their fathers, to remind their fathers how much they appreciate them for all that they do now God you are the ultimate father and we want to thank you for the ultimate sacrifice Jesus Christ our Lord that Heavenly Father through your giving of him and us receiving of his death burial and resurrection and faith that you endowed us with the Holy Spirit for greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world now God we pray that you use these marred and these scarred vessels to your glory that Heavenly Father, when you call us from labor to reward, we might hear the word servants well done. And we are going to be so careful to give you and you alone the praise. And we all said, Amen. Amen, amen. So grateful to God uh, for your presence and for this day. We pray that as we go a little high in service, that you come along with us and lift up the name of Jesus, knowing that he's able to do all things. We ought to glorify his holy name with thanksgiving in our heart, for he truly is worthy to be praised. Come on, church, let's lift up the name of Jesus. Amen, because he lives. I know I have somebody that don't mind testifying that because he lives, all fear is gone. Listen, that's what I know, that as long as the Lord is with me, even in the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because he is with me. I'm grateful today for that song, Because He Lives. It is a reminder of all of the benefits that God gives us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. On today, if you would, let us go to the book of Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. If you would go with me there, and I'll begin reading at the first verse. Deuteronomy 6, starting at the first verse. I'm reading from the King James Version of Scripture. And the Word of God reads, now these are the commandments, the statutes, and judgments which the Lord your God command to teach to you that you might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it. That thou might fear the Lord thy God and keep all his statutes and all his commandments which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's sons all the days of thy life, and that thy days might be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers has promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down and when thou risest up. Thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be frontlets between thine eyes. Thou shalt write them upon the post of thine house and on thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things which thou fillest not, and wells digged which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not, and when thou shalt have eaten and be full, then beware, lest ye forget the Lord which brought you forth out of Egypt from the house of bondage. 
Amen, amen. May God have a blessing to all of you. I read verses 1 through 12 of Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. Um, on today, um, I want to, if I could, for a few minutes, um, talk about characteristics of a godly father. Characteristics of a godly father. Um, on today, we are just grateful to be able to celebrate Father's Day. And I know many times when we hear the term father, there are some that only think of the individual um, that um, came um, and procreated with their mother, and many have no relationship. And so when you mention the word father, that for some, that is a very sticky point. It is a point of hurt. Um, a point of anger, um, a point of dismay. Um, some, when they hear the term father, it is a term of endearment because they can remember their father daily being in their homes, helping to guide and direct them, providing and protecting them. And this is a term of endearment. For some, the term father takes Another turn, it is mixed with sadness for they can remember when their father was alive, that now their father has been called home from labor to reward. And on today, there's a certain part of them that you feel is missing because their father is not here. But on today, I want to make sure that as we are looking at fathers, as we are honoring fathers, we want to make sure as men, as fathers, that what we are doing lines up with the word of God. We want to make sure that we are displaying characteristics of godly fathers, that by teaching our children according to the word of God, that by them living a life God himself has promised to prolong their days and to bless them with favor and unmerited things in their life that they themselves did not earn, but God through uh, his, own, uh, provide, his own divine providence would guarantee them things according to his word if we would teach them and live according to the word of truth. Um, what I like about this Deuteronomy 6, Moses is talking to the children of Israel, and he's letting them know that he's been given the duty to teach them what to do when they possess the promised land. You have to know that these people have already been in bondage in Egypt, and that they were coming from a situation where they were living under tyranny, where they were having to do um, as they were told, and they were being used and abused, but God in his infinite mercy um, used Moses to lead his people out of Egypt through the wilderness and eventually to the promised land. This process, however, was not easy. Um, it cost a whole generation save uh, Caleb and, J and Joshua. Um, however, these people traveled um, around, as the Bible describes, in a solitary way, and it was God who led them by a pillar, a uh, cloud by day, and a pillar of fire by night. He demonstrated that he could provide for them in the wilderness. However, he is a God that is true to his word. So on the precipice of them getting to the promised land, he now gives Moses the instructions to give to the children of Israel that they'll be able to not only possess the land, but prosper in the land. And I know I have some fathers out there who knows what it is like to live in the bondage of sin to live according to this world's way, to try to achieve things by the standard of this world, only to find that you don't get the same opportunities as others, that you find yourself with opportunities, with doors shut in your face, that there are times that you are disappointed, that there are times that you make decisions that are contrary to what you know is right, that you face the peer pressures to be able to provide and do for your family and to be able to stand and be counted with respect as a man to be honored by not only your, fa your family, but to also be one that gets the approval from your father, which is in heaven. 
At times, it can be a very delicate balance. It is hard at times because there are certain vulnerabilities that men do not like to talk about. There are certain weaknesses that we possess that we never want to be seen outwardly as one that possesses any weaknesses. But we all know that deep inside that there are days of doubt and despair. There are times of confusion and calamity. And yet we are called to be the head of households. We are called to be those that will stand in the gap for our children. We are called to be leaders not only in our households but in the church and in society as a whole. And I know that the burden of this responsibility is not easy. But I know that through faith that all things are possible. Listen, I can imagine the pressure that Joseph had as the earthly father of Jesus Christ. Can, can you imagine being the one out of every man that have ever been created, born of a woman, that your assignment, what has been given to you, preordained and predestined, is the fact that you will be the earthly father of Jesus Christ our Lord. Can, can you imagine, Joseph, what, what kind of pressure he must have been under when he himself is holding the one who can hold the world in the palm of his hand. When, when he is called to instruct the one and, and to be the one who is leading by example the one who created the heavens and the earth, it is there that I recognize the magnitude of this fatherhood and that the immense responsibility given is not to be taken, taken lightly nor entered into without understanding what it is it includes and what it all involves. You, you, you know that being a godly father is different than being just any kind of father because there are fathers who may be nice people who want to do the right thing for their children, might have the economic means to send them to private schools to make sure they live in the best environments, that they're able to enjoy some of the best material things in life, able to travel and just have all kinds of worldly experiences and yet never deal with the condition of a child's soul, letting them know that it is God who created you and that though you were born in sin and shaped in iniquity, that God himself had provided a way by which he's able to give you eternal life. And if you're able to take hold to the words of the Lord, if you're able to follow the commandments and the statutes and the judgments in which God commands us to do, then you can live a life of wisdom. You can live a life of prosperity and peace through the word of God. First of all, I notice if you're going to be a godly father, you're going to have to be a faithful follower of God. Yeah, you, you, you're going to have to be a faithful follower of God. Um, here, Moses lets them know that you, you're not going to have to just be able to be one who hears the word of God, but, but you're going to have to be able to live out that which you've heard. For faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, but, but faith without works is dead. That, there's going to have to be some action that evidences your faith, and that comes through you living out that which you say you believe. The first thing as being a faithful follower of God, you're going to have to do, you're going to have to love God with your whole heart, your whole soul, and with all your might. He tells them that in verse 5. He lets them know that in order to follow God, you're going to have to give him everything that you have. You, you're going to have to be willing to give of yourself and follow him. Many times we want to live unto ourselves. We want to create our own path. But if we know who God is and read his word, he lets us know he has already have plans for us, plans to do good, to, to prosper us, to give us a hope and a future. The problem is we don't want to line our will up with his will. We want his will to be our will. But when we pray, we pray, let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If you're going to be a faithful follower of God, you're going to have to love him. And the evidence of your love is to obey his word. I know that at 
at times what he asks us to do seems to be grievous because there's a rebellion between our flesh and our spirit. But what our flesh desires is not what our spirit desires. And because there is a battle between the, the spirit and the flesh, the Bible lets us know that if we walk after the spirit, we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. This is a battle that as fathers, we have to instruct our children to let them know that there are going to be some times in your life uh, that your mind and that your body is going to try to lead you one way, but you're going to have to have enough word hid in your heart that you don't sin against God, that you in within yourself will be able to bring yourself under subjection under God's word. It is though the demonstration of the father living his life in obedience, trusting God, that will allow the child to be able to see a real life example of what it means to be a faithful follower of God. As a matter of fact, as you live your life before your children as an example, you make no excuses about your errors. You make no excuses about your mistakes. But children, listen to what I'm telling you. When your parents are instructing you and they are letting you know the folly of your ways or, or how you are going astray, I know at many times we may think that parents are just fussing at us or they're just telling us this to tell us this, but when a father is giving you instruction, you ought to heed the instruction of your father. Uh, this is his responsibility as head of household to let you know what God has said because it is in following God that you can be led to the place of peace and prosperity. And if you go the way of God, then you know that at the end of that is eternal life. And so as we live our lives, let us remind ourselves that one of our characteristics is to be a faithful follower of God. When you're a faithful follower of God, it will cause you to be secondly active in your child's life. Yeah, yeah, many times this term father has been reduced to child support payments, to visitation rights, to, to merely a name signed on a birth certificate. But let me let you know that when you are an active father in your children's life, um, um, this causes them to know that they have your support. Um, there's nothing worse than an absentee father or a irresponsible father or an irritable father. The Bible lets us know, fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Ephesians 6 and 4, it is a reminder that it is not our job to nitpick and always complain and criticize, but never teach them and train them on what God has told them to do. It's easy to point out every little mistake that anybody makes, but if you don't have a solution to the problem, then all all you are is adding weight to a situation that's already what it is. But when you are a father who understands that to be active means to help them through whatever it is they are going through, then you find yourself making sure that all the things that you are doing is to get them to a place of maturity, that they lean on your father and the father of all, which is God the Father, recognizing that it is him who's able to do anything thing but fail. When you are active in your children's life, you are concerned with all of the different phases of their life from when they are in the womb to when they are born to when they begin to walk and run and talk to when they begin to go to school, when they reach adolescence and begin to go through their bodily changes, their mental changes, when they go from adolescence to young adulthood and making sure that you help guide them and be a voice of wisdom and sage advice as they're making their own decisions in their life and then to be able to celebrate them in the fruit of good living and righteous living as they mature and have their own families continuing the tradition of getting better every generation. It is because of you being active in their life. I remember the late great Kobe Bryant who made it very hip and popular to be what's called a girl dad to watch him with his daughter on the sidelines at the basketball games 
pointing out what's going on the floor, watching her lean on his shoulder, and him hug on her and, and hold her hand, and, and just having those moments of togetherness. Um, these are etched in the memory of many of us who watch this play out on the sidelines of the NBA games watching Kobe Bryant as he developed not only as a star on basketball terms, but a star as a father when we watched his commitment to his daughter. Th these are the things that show activeness in the children's life. And listen, you ought to be going to the school, talking to the teachers. I know many people only reserve that for the mothers, but listen, it's nothing like seeing fathers show up in the schools, especially in the elementary school schools to let someone know that, that my child has someone here that will support them, that will guide them, that will be here as a disciplinarian. Yes, the Bible lets us know that if you're going to be active in their life, you're not just active in a monetary way, but, but you're also active in watching them mature and grow. And there are some times, according to the word, the Bible says that God chastises us like a father does a son which he loves. Listen, you're, you're not doing your child any favors by not disciplining them. And discipline doesn't always mean that you have to strike them or that it's always about getting a bill. No, discipline means calling it to the carpet when they're in error, when they're doing wrong and let them know why it is wrong and then explaining to them what the expectation is as they develop and as they grow. When you're active in their life, you're watching the ebbs and flows of their life. You're watching their attitudes. You're watching how they develop in their thinking. And you begin to challenge them and you begin to grow with them as they are growing in grace such as you are growing in grace. When, when you are godly father, you are active in your children's life. But what are you actively doing? The Bible lets us know that you ought to be talking to them. You ought to be teaching them and you ought to be training them. Verse 7 lets us know that, that, that you should teach them diligently unto your children. What? The commandments. And you should do it, you should talk to them when you're sitting in your house, when you're walking by the way, when you're lying down, when you're getting up. Listen, he says that there ought to always be teaching going on. It should always be communication, some talking, some training. Um, there's a few differences, and many people want to train their children and still haven't learned to talk to them. The first thing you have to do is talk. Talking is to communicate effectively the truths of life with the word of God being the foundation. Listen, you have to learn how to talk to them, how to have communication with them, and you should be one who is equipped enough in the word of God that when you are talking to them that you know how to give them the word of God without per se saying open your Bible to this scripture and this verse, but being able to give them the words and the wisdoms that are housed in the word of God. And when they begin to ask you, how do you know these things? Then you can show them exactly what God is saying. But you can't teach anybody you can't talk to. And many times parents think I can train and teach you and have not established a bond of communication by which there can be open dialogue. There has to be a time of talking. And this time is not relegated to a certain time. Verse 7 lets us know you should be doing it all the time. When you're just sitting at the house, there ought to be a time of teaching. When you're just walking, going to the store, going about your daily business, there ought to be some conversations being had. When you're getting ready to go to bed because we don't know what tomorrow holds, there ought to be conversations and evaluating the day and what we've done and what's going on. And then when God wakes you up the next morning, you ought to be there to let them know God woke you up this morning and whatever happened on yesterday is gone but today you can live even the better it is a father who is showing a child how to make it through the ups and downs of life through a practical way of application and by living their lives as an example these 
are the things that give one confidence as they're growing and developing, especially dealing with the truths of God. Listen, it is hard to be able to live when you know that you were born in sin, you were shaped in iniquity, that, that you understand that the wages of sin is death, that you are not perfect, but the truth is God didn't call you to be perfect, he called you to be righteous, he told you to be upright. That means that when you make a mistake, you're able to stand and confess your sins, knowing that God is faithful, that he is just to forgive you of sin and cleanse you of all unrighteousness, that you ought to teach that to your children, you ought to be able to talk to them about your mistakes and be able to be open with them and let them know that God's grace is sufficient that, that you yourself were their age and you remember decisions that you made. So many of us want to act like we've lived in the clouds, that we were angels all our life, that we've never done anything wrong but the truth is here Moses is letting the children of Israel know that will be a generation that is going to come and you have to be reminded of what God has brought you from. He's brought you from bondage. He brought you through the wilderness and now he's getting ready to put you in your promised land. After all of the problems, all of the situations, all of the hurts and pain, God's word is being fulfilled in your life but there is a duty and a responsibility. There's an expectation and that is a standard that is associated with what God expects from you as he has given you or blessed you with the promised land. And if parents, if fathers are not willing to talk to their children, then you can't teach them. But, but, but the marks of a, of a good father, the characteristics of a godly father is once I'm able to talk to you, then I can teach you. That means to constantly being committed to problem solving. To, to planning, to persistence, to perseverance. I'm talking precept and example. See, once a child can talk to you and, and trust that what you are saying is for a benefit, now you can go through the process of teaching problem-solving strategies of how to plan their life, how to budget their money, how to budget their time, how to understand what's valuable from what's not valuable, what's holy and what's profane, what's good from what's evil. You can now begin to teach them and be consistently committed to showing them these different tools that they'll be able when time comes for them to make their very own decision, they will use these tools to guide them, namely the word of God to lead them in the path that they should go. It is in teaching this perseverance and this, and this persistence and, and searching and seeking God that will allow them to seek the path of righteousness and holiness. It will help them to be able to understand that life is but a vapor, that, that it doesn't last long. Just talk to the children that just graduated from high school. I guarantee you they didn't know that them four years was going to fly by that fast. And the truth is they don't know that before they know it, they'll be 30 years old. I know they're 18 a day, but they go blink twice and they'll be 30 years old wondering where did my twins go. I know I have a witness somewhere. You're going to get 40 and look back and say, where did my 30s go? Because time keeps on moving. And as you have your children up but for a short period of time, it is important that you communicate, that you talk to them, but then that you teach them the practical things of life, that they might be able to stand in this world against those things that the enemy is using to kill, steal, and destroy. Once you talk and teach, now you can train. To train them means repeating and challenging their attitudes, their thinking, and their understanding. Um, when, when, when you're training, you know, I remember um, when I was getting ready to become a teacher. They had people coming to the school to recruit us, and they just talked to us about what we were interested in. They talked to us about what it is that we want to do. And they were, were, were letting us know that education is a field for us, that, that you sound like a person who's willing to give back. And it was the most noble profession, and, and you can affect the world's change because you are the one that will be shaping the mind of the next generation. They just talked to us. And it inspired us to, to try to figure out, well, what is this really about? And so then from there, you get to get admitted into what's called the School of Education at that great Texas Southern University. You, you get to go into the School of Education. Now here is where they teach you 
all of the pedagogy, all of the methods, all of the language, all, all of the things that you need to understand about the teaching profession. However, when you graduate, because now you understand all of the rules, the regulations, you understand what the purpose of teaching is, and you've now perform, uh, you've, only, you've already formed your own philosophy of teaching, now you go to get a job, and that's where you receive your training. Yeah, 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 you've been talked to, you, you've been taught about it, but now you're actually ready to do it, and that's where training comes. I would tell a good, a godly father will always put their children in positions where they can demonstrate what they've learned. Listen, you're not protecting your children when you do not allow them to grow and develop. You have to give them the space to grow and be there when they make a mistake to guide them in the way that they should go. It is imperative for a father not, not, not to be one that will hold back these things, but to let them know that there is a way to prosper and to be able to live unto the things that God will bless you with. But, but you have to be able to listen and learn and take in the word of God so that when I talk to you, when I've taught you and now you're able to perform it, that is where you see wisdom show up. Wisdom is the application of your knowledge and understanding. It is the actually doing that by which you understand. And once you're able to talk, once you're able to teach and train your children, then the Bible lets us know once you can do that, then when he puts you in the place of opportunity, when he takes you to the place that you're supposed to be, then you'll be able to prosper according to what he would have you do. Listen, it'll be ready already. You're not going to have to dig any wells. You're not going to have to plant any trees or build any houses. You're just going to have to be a wise steward and know how to manage whatever God gives you. Listen, you don't want to work all your life. The Bible says a wise man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. You, you don't want to live your life and work all the those days and leave an inheritance to a fool. You want to make sure that you can build generational wealth and knowledge and understanding of the truth of the word of God, that your generations might be blessed, that their days might be prolonged in prosperity, peace, and wholeness. And to do so, you have to be one who's active in their life, ready to talk to them, teach them, and train them. Another characteristic of a godly father is that you're the head of the household. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're the head of the household. If you look at verse 10, um, it says, And it shall be with, with thee when, when the Lord thy God shall have thee brought into the land which he swore by thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not, and houses full of good things which thou fillest not, and wells you dig that you dig is not, and on and on. What he's saying is, I have positioned you to be the head of the household. He named the lineage according to the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. These men represented the priest, the provider, and the protector of the home. As the priest of your home, you ought to be the leader in prayer. You ought to be the leader in reading the word and committing your way to God to understanding that, that this comes with a great price to coming to church and making sure that your, your children understand the word of God and praising God. You, you are the priest of your home. You are the provider. You, you are the, you lead by working, by example, by making sure that all you are doing comes home, that, that your house is provided for you are the provider of the home, not only the tangible things, but the non-tangible things. You, you are the one that's making sure that there's love in the house, that, that you're providing a place of comfort, a place of protection, that, that all goes well with those under your roof. You are the protector physically, mentally, and spiritually. That is not because only you have that guard dog at the front door, that you merely have ADT or a ring app, or that you carry a good pistol, or, or that you know Taekwondo or Karate, that that is more to protect your family than being the big bad wolf, that you also have to be able to watch uh, the protection of their minds. We know that the enemy is looking to invade the minds of us, that, that, that wants to turn us and have us with doubt and anxiety, but, but we ought to protect their minds by assuring them that, that we are there with them, that, that we're not going to let any hurt, harm, or danger come. 
within our power, but then we go to the one who has all power, all control, and ask the Lord to protect our families uh, from danger seen and unseen. We are the ones who are ensuring that there's nothing going on that would cause any uh, dysfunctionality. And no, there are problems that will arise that we take time to make sure that we're doing everything we can to protect them from any harm and spiritually that they don't lose their soul for what would it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul. We got to be careful and we have to be mindful as the head of the household that we protect their physical, their mental, and their spiritual. By being able to do that, we're not only faithful followers, we're not only active in their life to teach them, to talk to them, teach them, and train them, and being the head of the household as the priest, the pro provider, and protector, but we're also the liberator. We are the emancipator. Um, by obeying God, we, we are free to enjoy his many blessings, to, to allow those to know our children to recognize that true freedom, the true blessing of being released from the bondage of the slavery of sin, is that we can live in the freedom of Christ Jesus, for who the Son has set free is free indeed. And when it is manifested, it is manifested to us and things that we don't deserve here, it is described as great and good cities that we didn't build, houses full of good things that, that we didn't purchase or buy, wells and vineyards. What God was describing, that everything is already set up. All you have to do is to go in and possess it and do what I say. I want to help somebody today. Children, your life is already set up. God has already preordained and predestined you. He's already created you for a purpose. But if you follow and look to him for your divine purpose, God will lead you in the perfect path. I didn't say everything was going to go the way you wanted. I didn't say everything was going to be easy. But the path that he has laid before you, the race that you are to run, if you would heed the instructions of your father and be able to live according to the truth in the word of God, God has promised that he will take care of you, that he will prosper you, that he will give you the peace that you need, and you'll be able to see how God himself has manifested his blessings in your life. As godly fathers, it, it is incumbent on all of us not to let go of the mantra or the mantle of taking care of our children, of loving them and of taking care of them because it is in the word of God that we can give them the emancipation, the freedom that they need to be able to live their life without fear, being courageous, knowing that God will never leave them nor forsake them when you teach your children to trust in the Lord with all of their heart and lean not unto their own understanding but in all their ways acknowledge him he will direct their path that's freedom in knowing that it's freedom in knowing that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength it's freedom in that it's freedom in knowing that greater is he that is in me that he that is in the world it's freedom in knowing that love will hide a multitude of faults. It's freedom in knowing that, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. It's freedom in knowing that the Lord do not treat me as my sins deserve. It's freedom in knowing that God himself has went away to prepare a place for us, that where he is, there we may be also. That is freedom when you know the word of God, when it explains to your children and they take hold to what God has given them. The freedom is doing that in spite of what I'm going through, God's grace and his mercy is sufficient. The Bible says his mercy endures to all generations. And that's really all I have for you today, that, that when you have certain characteristics or marks of a godly father by being a faithful follower, by being active in their lives, by, by truly being the head of your household and, and emancipating them through the freedom of living unto righteousness, truth, and holiness, then you can see rewards for your righteous living. It says you will get long days you will increase mightily and then you will also experience peace with God's prosperity. Listen, I don't know who I'm talking to on today. 
what father is going through the ups and downs of fatherhood, what you all is listening right now, what children are listening and going through the fact that maybe you feel like your dad is always strict. He's always uh, trying to make you do this or do that. Listen, there are times that the father must do and tell you what you need to hear, not that you're going to like it. It's not about whether you like it or not. It's about is it true or not. There must be truth. And this truth is evidence to us when we realize what God has told us to do and he manifested through the keeping of his promise that we are able to stand and thank God for bringing our children a mighty long way. Listen, when you really think about it, all that your children are and all that they are achieving it's not just because of you, it's because God has given you a great stewardship. He's given you a precious jewel in your child. And it is up for us, it is up to us to cultivate that, to continue to protect, to love, to pray, to be there, that God himself might receive the glory out of their lives. Let me let you know, God the Father demonstrates how this love works. He loved us so much that he gave us his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. He shows us how this works. When, when Jesus, even on the way to Calvary, he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane, he begins to talk to his father, the very father who along his ministry's path had been giving him all that he need in order to do what it is he was sent to do, to resist the temptation of the devil, to go out and to minister to people who were on the fringes of life, or those that were considered the scourge of the earth, to, to stand against those that were religious and held themselves as if they were better than others. He, he stood up to the religious. He stood up even to the political people who thought that they were in control and in power of everything. All of these things were done that, that God himself might show that he really is our father. And even when he was praying and asking if there be any way to remove the bitter cup of going to Calvary, he says, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thy will be done. Jesus the Son, recognizing that God the Father would do all that he will do in order to, to bring him back to resurrection, to resurrect him from the dead, that we might have proof that he has all power he suffered on our behalf that we too might have the ability to crowd our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Jesus dying on Calvary, being buried and resurrected, gave us a direct line that we can go to God for ourselves through Jesus Christ and be able to receive all of the instruction, all of the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to be able to lay our burdens at his feet. He does this so that even if our earthly father forsake us, if our earthly father is called from labor to reward, if our earthly father is absentee, he says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Listen, even if our earthly father is irresponsible. It's not there. He says, I don't sleep nor slumber. I'm right here watching you. If my eye is on a sparrow, I know that the Lord is watching, watching over us. Listen, he says, even if your father is one that, that makes you upset and provokes you to wrath, he says, I'm loving, I'm kind. That, there's mercy and compassion in me. Listen, if your earthly father don't get it, let me point you to the other father, our heavenly father. It is him that is able to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. And that's why we ought to give him glory. That's why we ought to give him praise. That's why we ought to honor him in our living that our living not be in vain. He says, be ye holy for I am holy. We ought to strive daily to live as though our, we living unto our Father which is in heaven. You know here at Cashmere, our mission statement is that we are building a family devoted to God through Christ. We recognize that God is our Father. What a great father we have. He loves us so much that he gave us his son. Not only that, he's given us life and life more abundantly. I don't know about you, but I pray today that as you fathers have listened on today, that you are reminded of your responsibility, that you are reminded of your duty, that you do not take it lightly. For, for the very life of your children and your generations hinge on your characteristics. It hinges on, on what you're promoting, what you value, what you see as important. When you set God as the priority, 
When you're letting your child know that everything that they have comes through you, but it comes from God. That, that, that regardless of how much I love you, that God loves you more. That, that regardless of what I do for you, I can't do it unless God give me the strength, unless he give me the provision and the power. It all goes back to God. So that when your children grow, they will remember to love the Lord God with all of their heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then love one another as they love themselves. This would now become the legacy that you would leave to your children. Not merely cars and houses and money, stocks and bonds, property. Not, not merely that, but you would leave them the legacy of the gospel. And by leaving them the leg legacy of the gospel, the Bible says earth, heaven and earth will pass away. But my word will last forever. If you give them that which lasts forever, Regardless if they lose the house, lose the money, lose, if they have God's word, they won't lose their soul. The Bible says if you hide the word in your heart, you won't sin against God. I pray today that all of us as fathers make sure that we are living our life according to what God has outlined and that we're able to live our life and show these characteristics of a godly father. Amen, amen. Happy Father's Day. God bless you. I pray something was said today that will encourage you, that will bless you, that will give you an understanding of the duties and responsibilities that God has bestowed upon us. And this great frat, this great fraternity that we are in called fatherhood all stems from the greatest father of all, which is God himself, God the Father. He is the one who has demonstrated what it is to be a good father. Amen. God bless all of you, and I pray God continues to bless you is my prayer. Um, at this time, if you would, prepare your hearts and minds to give an offering unto the Lord. Worship through giving. Luke 6, 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured unto you. Text KGMBC to 77977 or KGMBC APP to 77977. To give through our website, log on to www.cashmeregardensmbc.org. To pay through Zelle, the payee is kgmbcfinance at gmail.com. To pay through Cash App, cash tag Cashmere Gardens MBC. If you would like to send a love offering to our pastor, cash tag Pastor ELD. Our mailing address is 4302 Cavalcade Street, Houston, Texas, 77026. Stay connected. Thank all of you for your tithes, your offering, um, and all that you do in your commitment to Cashmere Garden Missionary Baptist Church. We pray God continues to bless each and every one of you as you are continuously being wise stewards of what God has blessed you with. Amen. Listen, we're here at our third Sunday. We know that it's Father's Day, but we have another celebration we do on third Sundays as well. So listen, where are my June birthdays? Where are all of my June birthdays? It is your time. It is your time for us to bring you front and center. We want to thank God for each and every one of you uh, whose birthday month is June. And at this time, we are going to prepare to sing happy birthday to each and every one of you. Go on, get in the middle of the room. Get ready to do your dance. Do your dance. Amen. And celebrate and thank God for another year. Come on as we sing happy birthday to our June birthdays. Happy birthday to all the June birthdays. Happy, happy birthday. Our own Reverend Ray Oliver celebrates June the 17th. So y'all, he, he celebrated happy birthday. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday, happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. 
And then we are grateful on today, on yesterday, to be able to celebrate um, Juneteenth, which was the Emancipation Proclamation um, that is now a federal holiday. And so I remember even being young that they wanted that to be a federal holiday. And here I am able to announce that finally Juneteenth is recognized as a federal holiday. And I pray that you took time to explain to your children the importance of this day, that it wasn't just festivities and fun, but you gave facts, that you let them know their history so they can be appreciative of those forefathers who sacrificed through slavery who went through all that they went through and endured that we might enjoy the freedoms we enjoy today. Please give them the gravity of the truth, the moment of those that sacrifice on, on our behalf that we might readily enjoy what we enjoy with fun, fellowship, and food. Let us give them the facts of what's going on that they might be knowledgeable and be able to celebrate with purpose. Amen. Amen. Listen, it's hot out there. I want everybody to stay hydrated. Don't get out there and overheat trying to do too much. Just make sure that you are staying safe as you can, doing what they are getting ready to come up on the dog days of summer, dealing with July and August. I pray for each and every one of you that you remain safe. Amen. Listen, as we're closing out, let us remember one another in prayer. Let's remember all of our bereaved families, those that are sick. Let us remember those behind prison and all those that are widows and orphans let us remember one another let us continue to love one another spurn up one another on to good works that God might be pleased in our service why don't you look at me as I bless you now may the grace of God the love of Christ the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit may it rest may it rule may it abide with us now and forevermore and we all agreed by saying amen listen why don't you look around and let somebody know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it but love me back. And as I always tell you, Cashmere, a better me makes a better us. I love you all. Go in peace. We thank you for worshiping with us here in the garden, here in the garden until we until we meet again. We will be praying for you. We will be praying for you. And Sunday, Sunday, bright and early, we will be praying.